so this systems thinking is a short way of talking about the interconnectedness of the world. If we want to have wise solutions, we need to realize that whatever, whatever situation we're trying to address is itself a system. There's lots of different things involved within it that are interacting to generate that situation. There is the idea of one linear cause is an illusion and gets us in trouble. We keep thinking, oh, we try this out and suddenly there's side effects. There's no such thing as side effects. There's only effects. You know, side effects are things that were on the side of this linear cause we thought was so becoming sensitive to the multitude of causes and effects and relationships and dynamics going on is part of achieving uh, wise solutions. And the other part is knowing that uh, the, whatever situation you're working with is, exists in a context of a larger world um, to which it is connected. Um, so this is, um, ultimately you can't track every single, every single connection and influence in any given situation. Uh, you have to have some sense of relevance, but it's greatly expanded. Systems thinking does not stop quickly. Uh, it understands you need to keep, the, the, the more you can take into account, the less something's going to come up that surprises you. So um, sensing into the system, and I'm, uh, I'm saying addressing any situation wisely requires understanding and tapping relevant participants and connections. Who else is involved? Who else should be part of the conversation? Uh, and what kind of, what other connections do people have? Very often the solution will also involve systems thinking. People have, uh, people have connections that you might not have even thought of, which are problematic or, you know, it's like somebody who has agreed to help out on solving this problem is in fact connected to other people who are gonna prevent them from doing that. That's something you need to take into account. Uh, so the, the sense of who's, who's involved and how are they connected is a big chunk of what systems thinking. And then I list, I have a much broader sense of systems thinking than a lot of people do. Cybernetics is largely about feedback loops, understanding uh, what are the, the feedback loops that, that balance things out. Uh, usually it's called negative feedback loops. They're not negative bad, they're just negative in terms of balancing things out. So if something is too much or too little, uh, the thermostat is a standard kind of uh, uh, example of that. You know, if it gets too hot, the thermostat cools things down. It gets too cool, the thermostat brings things up. That's a, and there's social feedbacks like that too. Uh, and positive or magnifying feedback loops are things getting, when the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, that's a positive feedback loop, magnifying feedback loop either makes more, more rich or more poor. Uh, and ecological, that's the nature. E ecology is a study of natural systems. So you have an ecosystem. Uh, there are different kinds of animals and plants and, um, and relationships between them and water and land and whatever. And all these things fit together in interesting ways. So if there's some shift, if some animal is removed from the system, goes extinct, uh, or some woods is chopped down, uh, there is, or somebody just builds something in the middle of that, something shifts. And sometimes it doesn't have a big impact, sometimes it has massive impact, even a very small shift. So we need to be, uh, we need to be conscious of the environmental ecological systems and be able to think that way. And social systems, politics, economics, uh, the relationship between politics and, politics and economics, part of why the rich get richer is because they have money to buy government actions, to buy influence on representatives, to buy, you know, to support elections, or to buy, you know, own newspapers and, you know, magazines and whatever, you know, it's like wealth buys access and influence to power and you can then arrange the power structure to, uh, to do the things that you need to get more, more money. And that creates a positive feedback back loop. 
until a negative feedback loop comes, like uh, Bernie Sanders or somebody who says, stop, no more of this, and creates a movement, that movement becomes a, 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 a negative feedback loop to balance out the system in some way. So that's another form of system. Physical systems, um, it's like the, the carbon system, uh, you know, the, all the uh, uh, atoms and molecules in the world are going through us in vast, interesting ways, and uh, they have they have impact. The, the physical, you know, Fukushima, you know, nuclear power plant goes down, and suddenly there is those nuclear materials are moving through the system, and some of them go in the water, some of them go in the air. And understanding how all that works is necessary. Uh, yes, I just just read an article about about uh, concrete. Reinforced concrete is actually weaker than regular concrete in the sense that the reinforcements, the uh, steel reinforcements, rust and start to crack the the uh, the concrete. And all sorts of bridges and buildings are suffering from this, and it's going to be really hard to put them back together again. Uh, understanding the physical relationships between things, and shamanic is often I mean there's often a wall between shamanism and science, but there's some very amazing uh, the shamanic perspective in general is many different shamanic cultures and methods and all the rest. But the shamanic uh, culture is a uh, assumptions are that we are embedded in natural systems. We have you know all my relations. We are we are directly related to everything that is. There's an assumption of relationship rather than an assumption of separateness. And sometimes for particularly skilled shamans, they can look at a, a plant they've never seen before and tell you what its nutritional or medical you know, healing powers are. Uh, and also you know, see things from a distance, a variety of things that they have used in the past to help their, their community survive. Uh, but I think it is worth, there are more and more people who are studying shamanic capacities, but I start right at the, you know, the simple thing that they assume we are embedded uh, in a larger, larger thing that we are intimately related with. Um, and cultural, it's fascinating stuff where, where the rituals and, um, and taboos uh, of some cultures, I read about a, a, a culture in Southeast Asia that had all these directions about how to handle, how it's important to deal with the, uh, the um, uh, agriculture, their system of agriculture had all sorts of things. So if you do this particular thing, all these, you know, spirits are going to haunt you and wreck your, your crop and all that. And when they, these scientists went and analyzed it and it turned out this was, this cultural structure was, was built to uh, embody what was needed in order to successfully plant uh, and grow things there. Uh, the, and it was once they did an ecological analysis, all of these things could be explained scientifically, but it was built into the narrative and everybody was spooked to do things the wrong way without knowing quote unquote why uh, from a scientific sense. There's lots of uh, knowledge regarding relationships um, built into cultural practices, which should be treated with some respect before they are tried to be altered. So these are just examples of all the different ways you can think systemically. And that is, in general, thinking systemically is distinct from thinking in isolated, fragmented, separate ways. You know, we are basically separate. We can do what we want. We are powerful. You know, <laughs> our technology is totally brilliant and, you know, can make X happen without Y and Z happening. Uh, we are living in more complex human constructed systems than we ever have before in our history. And we don't know how to think through them, through space and time and causality. Uh, so we use our old 10,000 year old senses uh, and um, perceptions and ways of thinking uh, that miss really. We don't, we don't see lots of things that are going on 
around us that are going to impact us because we aren't built to. The technologies have technologies and social complex social systems. You know, the money that you put in the bank <laughs> is going all sorts of interesting places. You have no idea. Uh, so it takes experts who know the nuances of systems to help us understand if they're the right kind of experts to help us understand what's actually going on in this issue that we are that we are wrestling with uh, and there's more to say about that in other patterns such as experts on tap but i do want to say that among the experts should be people who are experts in systems thinking that is relevant to whatever we're dealing with and they should be invited to speak to us and interact with us to help us understand before we make decisions uh, what the impact of those decisions are and how to effectively deal with the situation we're dealing with. Uh, it's sort of, there's a level of humility that comes from, from thinking systemically. And if we wanna have wise decisions, we need to take into account what needs to be taken into account for long-term broad benefit. That's the definition I'm working with in this system. Uh, system of ideas. Uh, and so anything that takes, helps us take into account relevant fields of relationship will help us be wise by that definition. Shamanic systems dynamics are often embedded in the, the narratives that are built from the shamanic understanding of the world. Uh, one really interesting one, the, the, the example of Earth as mother, which is a very um, a broadly used metaphor in many, many uh, um, tribal cultures. Uh, the fact that we are totally dependent, when, when, we're, when we're very young, we're totally dependent on our parents, particularly our mothers. The mothers are known archetypally as nurturers, and we are nurtured by nature, uh, and you don't disobey your mother without consequences. <laughs> well, it's a very interesting, all the, the narrative, and, the, and I heard the idea of digging into your mother for resources, just it sickens people who have that perspective, uh, the native peoples, the, the whole idea of mining, uh, most of the native peoples are not into mining and the idea is repugnant to them. Uh, and that there are taboos on that and that keeps the societies, you could say, well, that keeps the societies backward, but that's from our temporary modernist perspective. Once you start looking at what's involved in sustainability, you go, this is this whole enterprise of uh, mining and metals has been uh, a disaster for the larger, the larger enterprise of life. Uh, and there may be ways to handle it that are much more sustainable and we may be learning them, but I'm just noting that the, the dynamics that happen in society and technology when you start mining metals are cut off at the start by the image of cutting into your mother to get something that you want. Uh, and that there's a, there's a wisdom in that. Uh, so that's a that's an example of the of the uh, system dynamics. And you could analyze that from a social, you know, sociological or a economic or a um, ecological perspective. You know that that's that's why this narrative makes sense. But the fact is, the narrative itself has that understanding embedded into it. You don't have to have the scientific knowledge in order to have it have the impact that it has on your collective life and to generate the wisdom it has. And we can say, well, some of shamanic stuff is wise and some of it is really stupid and go, okay, well, some of our technological and scientific understandings are wise and some of them are stupid, you know, once you look at their impacts in the world. So I'm just raising that as a, uh, the traditional societies have embedded in their narratives, a lot of things that we come about in more linear investigative ways that we would be wise to include. Some of those folks 
in our deliberations and trying to understand what constitutes wisdom for our societies. There is act in actual fact, there is so little directly in the field of uh, dialogue and deliberation. Uh, and I think that's sad. Um, I guess one of the main ones that we already know about is the um, computer modeling, uh, computer modeling for climate, climate understandings. Uh, so for me, uh, in general, I would, I have advocated for a while having uh, people who understand and who popularize the understanding, particularly people who are known for being accessible, uh, articulate people in any of these fields, you know, cybernetic, cybernetic ecological, social systems, whatever, uh, to have them as uh, expert, expert witnesses in citizen deliberative councils uh, and including wisdom councils. I think it is uh, people's intuitions are often not informed by, uh, by systems thinking. We tend to experience life as a separate entity. And if we sense our connectedness, it's usually with the immediate connections around us. We don't have a good sense of long-term uh, or distant connections and or the complex uh, 